Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, my name is John Salito. I am the creator and writer of Veritas, the webcomic. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at John Salito. You are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It is 9 to 11 questions long, about 15 minutes, give or take. And we are joined by a very talented and creative person in the entertainment industry. So who is our guest today? Our guest today is a multi-talented comic book creator. He has four issues of this current comic that we are talking about today called Veritas. We're joined by the ever talented John Salito. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's good to have you. And for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Hi, I'm John Salito. I am the creative director for Wild Hair Comics. I am the writer for the comic Veritas. I do a lot of comics work at a comics podcast. I have a second series I write called Certifiable Investigations. And I'm also a veteran of the video game industry. So I'm a twofer here on those creative entertainment people. Well, that's good because, you know, it's for comics, TV, film, music, and video games. So all you need to do is be an actor in a short film and you'll have a three. Right. I'm, I get the EGOT for two geeks talking. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I don't think I've had one in 15 years. So that'll be interesting. That's the goal now. <laughs> Well, obviously, multi-talented in many different fields. We have a lot to touch on, very limited amount of time. But what is Veritas all about? Veritas is a neo-noir superhero series that is focused more on procedural storytelling. And I don't mean, you know, random action storytelling like in video games. More so, it is kind of like Law & Order meets the comic Invincible. It is a comic about people behind the masks, as well as how they feel about being a superhero, what that means to them, and what it means to be a hero in general to society it is a lot more grounded in reality than uh, your traditional tights and fights so i'm excited to bring it to a lot of new people so then why is that an important story for you to tell i think it's important i think for me initially because I, I was getting a little overwhelmed by the you know end of the universe type stories that we see a lot in comics currently but i also wanted to show more of a humanistic side of what a superhero is there's so many shows kind of like the cw version of like arrow or flash that kind of becomes a soap opera or a high drama i wanted to show relatable people who happen to have superpowers that made superheroes more engaging and more impactful to the everyday reader because they could connect with them more seriously. You have a Kickstarter campaign. We have to mention that because uh, yes. or else it would be remiss for you to come on the show. Crowdfunding campaigns are always a, a second or third job. What have you learned from this particular campaign? Is this your first campaign? This is my second. So the first one I did, uh, I did with Zoop, which is a crowdfunding alternative uh, website to Kickstarter. Uh, Zoop is actually, I had a very good experience with them. They are a group of individuals who actually give you hands-on help for your campaign. They were very responsive and they gave me a lot of assistance through setting the campaign up, things that might help. They helped promote the campaign themselves as well. I really appreciated that. My first time on Kickstarter, I wanted to see if I could do it myself just because I wanted to see what the process was and if it was any different. Kickstarter is a lot, but it is a website with a decade of experience doing exactly what it is. So it's a lot more streamlined, a lot more is under my control, a lot more I have to do. So there's benefits to doing Kickstarter, definitely, because it is a better built website. Uh, frankly, I didn't build anything for the Zoop campaign, so I can't really speak to whether or not it's good or not, but it is a, a dedicated website that has a lot of history. Zoop, however, gives you a lot of personal touch. You're against other comics, so it's like-minded people are on that site. They're looking for more comics to, to back. You're not trying to crowdfund your comic next to somebody trying to do the next pair of awesome sneakers. So there's something to be said about using crowdfunding sites that are directed towards your audience as well, and I think that's 
been a big thing that I've been learning is one's a lot more noise. The other one is a lot less work, but it's also got to work a little bit harder because it's a smaller site. You're trying for people's attention to focus in on what you're creating here. And social media in itself is kind of a black hole in that existence where you have seconds to grab someone's attention. So how do you, how are you doing that between a Kickstarter campaign and of course, trying to get more eyes on the comic? awful sort of dichotomy of like, do I also need to be an influencer nowadays uh, when it comes to social media promotion and being a creator? There is something to be said about being social media literate and understanding how to utilize social media to your advantage, hashtags, memes, what's happening right now in the cultural zeitgeist is important to understand. Otherwise you're just kind of doing what I refer to as the, the no man's Island approach where everybody's on their own Island in the ocean and they're just shooting flares up and hoping that the, the planes or the ships see them. And that those things have tons of people on them because that's kind of what a lot of people do. And I do it all the time too. So I'm not, you know, putting any shade on anyone who does that, but it is a lot of just being aware and understanding what works that somebody else is doing that maybe you could do as well. I've been doing a lot of that for this Kickstarter. I've talked to other creators who have Kickstarters. I was like, hey, what do you do that I don't do? And they're like, there's so many weird tips and tricks that you need to learn. Here's a couple of them. This is what I found works. Sometimes it's just luck of the draw. Sometimes some people want superheroes. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they want this and they don't want that. The most important trait to have is persistence though. You can't give up because if you then... Yeah, you really are screaming into the void and hoping somebody hears you once every month. You have to be consistent. You have to put the time in, put the work in. And that's hard. That's energy, time, dedication, attention you could be putting elsewhere. Don't burn yourself out, but maybe schedule some tweets, schedule some posts. Make sure that you're constantly doing it so you don't have to be doing it all the time. You're the writing creator, obviously, of this particular comic. Now, who else is on your team that has helped make this a reality? So glad you asked. I work with the very talented uh, Davis Dominguez. Davis is a fantastic artist, works for other publications like Zenoscope. He is just incredible. I was so fortunate to have found him on a portfolio website. He was eager to agree. Even though we've never met in person, he is an incredible collaborator. And he oftentimes, when I sent him a script, I was like, hey, can I do a double page spread here? And I'm like, you absolutely can. Please do. He's so fun to work with and riff with and give ideas to. And a lot of the new characters coming out in the series are I have an idea for this and then he draws the character based off of an idea that I have and it's perfect and I'm like don't change a thing do exactly that the current colorists for issues one through six are Valerie St. Gillet and Nylisha Davis they are a fantastic duo I've worked with them for issues one through six Valerie and Nylisha are almost done with issue five and are working on issue six right now great talents they're a Nylisha does flatting for Valerie so for those of you who don't know colorists, sometimes you have a flatter and a renderer. The flatter does the base colors of all the work and the renderer comes in and flushes them out and deepens them, does the textures. It's kind of like a penciler and an inker for basically line work. Kind of think of it like that for those who don't know. So then in terms of finding these people, uh, you mentioned the uh, portfolio website and how did you find your colorists? Colorists, uh, I found them on Twitter. It kind of becomes once you follow one, you start to follow others because they start popping up in your, your algorithm and things like that. And that's always the best part of it is finding new talent or finding new people that you want to collaborate with. And I was very fortunate. Valerie was willing to do this and I live just somebody that she works with very closely. So she was kind of like, I have a flatter. Is it okay if I work with them? And I was like, yeah, I don't have one. So if, <laughs> if you have someone in mind, please, absolutely. And they're a great team. And I've been very fortunate to work with them. Never underestimate the power of somebody's Twitter or Instagram. It is a great, easy portfolio to find. And sometimes it is easier to find than some of these artist-centric portfolio websites that might be hidden and, you know, kind of look like offshoot deviant arts, or you're looking too much on deviant art and you're like, mm, I don't know if I should look here. Really dig into people's profiles and timelines if you have the chance. It's it's worth your time. When you gave your script mm -hmm. to Davis, what was a piece of artwork that you got back that was way better than what was written on the page? Ooh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, and that's not slight against myself or be like, oh, he's so much better than I write. It is more or less, it's really hard to pick one because everything lives in my head until I see it, until I see the line work. And that's always such a weird, abrupt thing. Be like, that's exactly what I wrote. Or that's better than what I wrote. And I have to say, page four, issue one, the big kind of cliffhanger moment before we jump back in time a little bit, 
is such a great page. And I was blown away by it when I saw it. And I was so excited by it. And that is kind of the fun about be writing comics is it's collaboration. You know, and this has happened on sort of Bible investigations too, where I've written something. I'm like, nope, that's better. Do that instead. One of the later issues in Veritas, I was talking to Davis and he was like, can I do a, a double page spread here? And I said, yes, absolutely do that. I had forgotten I could write those. Straight up forgot I could be like, oh, I could do an awesome, cool action. But no, I just wasn't writing him. This is a double page spread moment. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Always listen to the people that you're working with. They know what they're talking about. You you're never the best judge of, every, of anything. That's always something to, to be humble about is like, I have this great idea, but it could also be better. It's always something to think in, in your mind. It's like a improv class. Yes, and with your collaborators. How long do you have for the campaign? Between 16 and 15 days, depending on when this comes out. Uh, we're about halfway through. We're going for $4,000 for all four issues. Uh, originally, I had it for just issues three and four. And then you could buy one and two because I had done the one and two campaign on Zoop. But then I realized not everybody on Kickstarter would know that. It is now more kind of focused on all four issues, which you can get digitally, physically with stickers and awesome art. There's even some spaces left to get a cameo in later issues of Veritas if you're so inclined to be drawn into a comic. The cameos that I've been working on from the last campaign are some pretty great ones that are resulting in possible recurring characters, <laughs> which I've been excited about to see. Some people have some really great ideas and I'm like, can I keep using you for a thing? Because that's really funny. And they're like, yeah. Sure. And I'm like, okay, cool. That helps me have to not make that character up if that is a real person. <laughs> so what are some of the tiers you're excited about showcasing and getting to the masses once the campaign gets funded? Obviously, their physical collection tier that I really like, which is issues one through four with stickers. You get a Citizen Defenders Initiative sticker, which is the organization that runs all the superheroes. You get the Veritas logo. And then there's two new stickers, one of which is for Pinnacle, which is a mysterious organization that we've only heard of so far in the series. And then the other one is a insignia for the Meta Militia Motorcycle Club, which is the Meta Human Motorcycle Club that is now embroiled in the situation that Shield Maiden and Veritas are investigating. I'm so happy that they're finally involved because they're so great and they're so fun. And, and Davis has some really cool designs with them. There's obviously these amazing pinups that Davis has drawn, as well as a new pinup by Josh Hood and DJ Chavez. That is amazing. And I am so in love with it. There's just some really great stuff that people can grab if you're a returning fan or a new fan. Everyone usually asks, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice you've ever received? But what is the <laughs> second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your varying careers. This one kind of goes for a lot of different types of art, but your first draft doesn't matter. Just finish it. Doesn't matter what it looks like. It's never going to be perfect. It's the first draft. Get all the words out on the page or the lyrics or the sketch or whatever it is. First draft is not important. You're going to make it better anyway. It's okay. Be at peace with that not being perfect and you'll get out of your own way and you'll make something better. It's okay. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Ooh. Frankly, this was something I think I was watching. It was my first watch through of The West Wing. And all those characters are meant to be incredibly intelligent, very smart, top of the field people. So it's kind of like, of course you have the right thing to say at the right time. And also you're written by a writer who's going to emphasize how important writing is. But I think in essence, as a show that taught me lessons or informed me of things or made me think about things in a different way by having conversations and being basically just about conversations. I found that really powerful and I found that it got me to put myself in situations or made me think about things that I hadn't necessarily really kind of considered. To me, one, it showed that language had power, but also art had power, that it could put me in those situations to be like, obviously I'd read books before and other comics, but I think this was the first time I became like cognizant of the fact that, you know, not just video games where I get to interact with the scenario, but art gets to have me have that interaction as well. And just words can do that. And that was really powerful to me. The fact that you've had multiple careers now in comics and video games, you know, what have you learned from both industries and the various people that you've interacted that has made you appreciate the pros and the cons of each industry? This is, you know, as a writer and an artist in my own way, everyone is very precious about something that they create, whether it's a line of code, concept art, a design, music, whatever. Everyone is very precious about it. And there is a way to have a conversation constructively about it that creates a, a collaborative experience that is so much easier 
once you kind of empathize that everyone is thinking about something that they made the same way that you're you are that sort of ability to connect with another person is so important professionally personally and is also something to really keep in your mind when making art people connect and will find this important or will will have a different way of interpreting something and you just gotta be true to yourself about it and understand that they're going to be true to themselves about it. And the best way to, to talk about it, if you need to work with them is meet them where they're at, instead of just being like, this is, this sucks and you're bad at this. Why are we doing it this way? You got to really understand how somebody's going about this and how the way that they're thinking and then talk with them that way. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Definitely Denny O'Neill, who is one of my favorite, if not my favorite comics writer. I think there is a level of honesty to his work that you don't see in a lot of comic creators. First and foremost, uh, everything that he's ever written has something to say. Regardless if it's silly or serious, there is something he's trying to convey through his writing, whether it be Tights and Fights comics or something else. He is always trying to say something, and I appreciate that. But there's also an honesty about his work that I respect in a level of self-awareness that is just like, no, it's good to kind of look back and have these sort of retrospectives about your work and understand you were not that good or that was a bad decision and you've improved. And the best example is you know him talking about his run on wonder woman he's like we shouldn't have done that that was the, one of the worst things i ever did i should not have done that to that character and i'm so sorry that i did and it's like that's really important and you have to know yourself really well to understand that like you made a mistake and to have that honesty is important as a creator to not take it like you always know what's going on the easiest way to learn that is work with an editor they're going to show you not every decision you make is the right one and it's important to have that perspective from a professional standpoint, you have been, of course, in the video game industry and, of course, now in comics as well, too. So professionally, you are successful in that regard. You've created Veritas. So, you know, triple success. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I would say yes, because I am self-actualized in the way that I think that I am able to create and pursue something that I enjoy with my own work in a self-sustained way. I try not to look at personal success as like, oh, I'm you know wealthy because of the success of my endeavors. It's more or less like I get to do the thing that I want to do. I'm happy doing that. I have friends and family and, and loved ones. I'm okay. And that I think is personal successes. I am happy, not all the time, but I don't need to be happy all the time, but I'm good. I've, I feel good. And I think that is personal success beyond anything is just being happy with where you are. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Terribly. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I journal a lot. Journal, diary, whatever you want to call it. I do my best to write it in every day, regardless of what it is I put in there, even if it's just like, had lunch today, that was good, to, oh man, had a weird conversation today, and this is how I feel about it. Why do I feel that way about it? But the failures go in there a lot because they are definite like deconstructions of why do I feel like I failed? Why did it fail? Why do I feel this way about it? I'm very fortunate also to be able to go to therapy. That has helped me tremendously to understand how I deal with failure. And the biggest thing that I've learned from that is accepting is different than wallowing. Being able to accept your failures, understand them, acknowledge them, and move past them is different than being bogged down by the failure and sitting with it and living in the failure and having that overwhelm you. And that has been a struggle that I've always had, and I am getting better at it. Some days I'm better than others. Other days it's not so great, and other days I'm great at it. I do my best to acknowledge it, live in that moment, and then try and be constructive with that failure and learn from it to move forward. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's a comic creator, a creator of video games, or something creative entirely that maybe you've inspired in some way, shape, or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Keep making things. Art, regardless of what it is and whatever medium that it's in, is important to someone somewhere. Someone's scribble or first attempt or first album or first sculpture or first comic or first book they, they don't think is very good is someone else's inspiration. And that's important. They help other people feel seen or empathized with and inspires them to make their own because they're like, oh, I really like that. I, I want to do that. Or I can do that. Or, oh, well, if that person can do it, I can do it too. Keep making things. It doesn't matter if you are the next 
Stephen King or Grammy award winning artist or whomever, as long as you have inspired somebody else, you've done an art and you should keep doing it. And that's all that really matters. If your life was a comic book or movie or video game, what would its title be? And what would its soundtrack be? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Probably a lot of black keys, a lot of mid 90s punk music very much sounding like the tony hawks pro skater soundtrack probably um very much like that Ooh, title too many ideas very definitely that would probably be the title <laughs> and i don't know if, if you've ever seen this game before but this is one of those business sims but it's called game dev tycoon yeah, yeah. Where you run a game dev studio love that game even yeah. though i work in the game industry and that's kind of i'm just playing a little simulation of what i do all day it would basically be that but you'd be able to do whatever creative endeavor you wanted and it's just like you're going to keep doing these until one of them works <laughs> you just got to do it because you have all these interests as unexciting as that is it still would be very rewarding it's like kind of like the sims yeah. it's like all right well now i've mastered stunt man guess i'll be a you know a guitarist forever now <laughs> Well, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. John, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much, Kurt. I really appreciate it. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where is the Kickstarter and when does it end? All right. Well, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all those lovely social medias, you can find me at John Salito, J O H N. S-O-L-L-I-T-T-O, -T -T two L's, two T's. I try to make it very easy by just making it my name. As far as the Kickstarter, obviously you can find it on Kickstarter with Veritas uh, issues one through four. It's the print run. 16 or 15 days left. Please go ahead, grab yourself some new indie comics if you haven't seen it before. If you're a returning backer, hi, thank you so much. Come back and get some more. But thank you all. I really appreciate it. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. <sighs> our YouTube channel is a lot more updated than our website because I am only one person, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And the podcast is back after 12 or so years. You can find that on twogeekstalking.podbean.com or search for your audio streaming services and find a platform that works for you because there's like 16 of them I've applied to. So oh, yeah. choose your own adventure in that case. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.